go. I don't know what it is. I believe that may be a small man. This week on Kentucky Afield. It's one of those special fishing trips that only comes around every so often. Oh, look at here. Oh, no, what? That's a striper. We're catching trophy smallmouth, white bass, and striped bass on the Tennessee River. Then, it's one of the best times of the year here in the Commonwealth. It's turkey season, and we're hunting them. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Kentucky Afield. Every week, Kentucky Afield brings you features on hunting and fishing across the state. That's my pup. I'm proud of him. Here he comes right there. Let's get ready. Get ready. Look at that. What a nice, nice fish. Hey, we got wow. it up right there. We did. There he is. Ooh, a nice one, too. Boy, he's healthy. What do we got? <laughs> that was awesome. Got the first one. Got one. Big small mouth. Very nice. Double point. They're in there. There they go. Oh my gosh. Woo. Look at that joker. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Whoa, this is a good one. That's better than good, Chad. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Afield. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. If you fish Kentucky, chances are you have been to Kentucky Lake or Lake Barkley. But when you head west, don't forget about the great fishing opportunities below the dams. Today's one of those days I really look forward to, and that's hitting the river down here in western Kentucky with Jim Dew. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. You know, this is the time of year that uh, you just told me a date, and we said, let's make it happen. But, you know, anytime you come to the river, you just gotta be ready to catch whatever whatever the river will give you once. Right. Yep. We'll throw some swim baits and if that don't work, we'll catch some live bait and try that. Let's go give it a try and see what we can't uh, luck into. I know you brought your fishing buddy with you today too. Yeah, she wouldn't let me leave the house without her this morning. I mean look at that face. Who who would who could leave that at home? <laughs> All right, well let's roll. Go ahead. Which way are we going here? That way? Yeah, just start fishing. Here we go. Don't know what it is. I believe that may be a smallmouth. You think so? It's not, it could be a striker. No, it's a smallmouth. Smallmouth? What do you know? Ooh, that's a good one. Look at that. Smallmouth bass. I tell you what, people travel all over the place trying to catch them a three and a half pound smallie like that, huh? Look at that beautiful fish. Now these are some of my absolute favorite fish to catch, but I tell you what, I couldn't bring myself to eat one of these for a million dollars. <laughs> this one's going back. Here we go. That's smallmouth. That's what it looks like. Smallmouth. Man, and he wanted it. Look at that, fitting up shad. Another good fish. Look at there, what a beautiful fish. What do you want? You want a treat? Here we go. I think I might have to steal one of them little green baits off hey, there. Hey, I got a pocket full of them here. What we got this time? That's Looks like nice another smallmouth again. Oh, a buffalo. Maybe I don't want one of them <laughs> green baits. <laughs> That's not exactly what we were going for, was it? That? He ate it. Ellie, that's, that's more your style right there, girl. All right, see you later. There we go. Well, I'll tell you what. Man, I, this is a smallmouth here. 
This is a better fish here, giving this reel a workout in this current. Oh, look at here. Oh, no, what? That's a striper. What do you know? Sitting here forecasting row three different species of fish, and now we've got a striper. What do you think, Ellie? Now, Jim, what's the length limit on these? 15 inches. I believe that's gonna make it. I think he'll make it. Uh oh, what you got? Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> Found another rock. So, you know, the length limit for striper changes on different bodies of water, but here you say it's 15 inches, and what are you allowed? To, what are you allowed? Five. Five of them? Five striper, yes. We'll see what we got here, because if that thing is a keeper, I tell you what, it doesn't get much better eating than this right here, does it? That's some good stuff. 22 inches. I believe that's a good one. We, you think we're gonna keep it? If you don't, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Smallmouth and, and stripers? What you got going on down here? <laughs> living the dream. We you got are it all. Living the dream. We're catching uh, some prize fish today, as far as uh, species go. That's for sure. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, that's a good smallie. Here we go. Well, that that there is a good fish. That's a beautiful, beautiful smallmouth bass right there. I think we've caught more smallmouth than anything else. And hey, this is a really, really good one. Oh, you got one? I got a fish, yeah. Okay. Think it's a striper? I think so. There you go. Need a net? There you go. Thank you, sir. Hey, this is getting this is getting good. No, we're not on Lake Cumberland. We are. We are out here on the Tennessee River catching stripers and smallmouth off a rock pile on swim baits. Oh no, I don't want any sugar. You might eat something bad. Oh, bite. What we got here? There's what they are. Hey, I tell you what, if there's a bunch of them in there, we'll have a good time too. You ain't a kid. Look at that. That's a big old bait that is completely <laughs> gone. This is a white bass. It's kind of a small one, but uh, you think we'll catch a bigger one or you think we ought to keep that? What do you think? You clean them that size normally? I do. Well, let's go with That's good with that. I'm good with that. Uh oh got him. I think they're just all over this point. These were weighed a pound and a half a piece. We'd have a mess of fish, you know? Oh, you ain't kidding. Those bigger fish could be out just a touch further. Here we go. It's a little better fish. Hey, not with white bass fishing. This is what it's supposed to be like right here. A little better fish. We'll take that. Rod's bent a little more on that one. That's a good one. Big enough. Ellie, you want to get a bite of that? A little better fish, isn't it? Yep. There we go. That's what we're after right there. Look at that. That's a pretty white bass right there. Tell you what, doesn't get any better than that thing fight way bigger than their size, and they taste way better than you'd think. And when you catch a couple, usually you get on bunches.
we've had a great day of fishing so far and we were about ready to call it quits. We're like, you know, we've got live bait in here. Let's make a couple of drifts and see if we can't pick up another big fish. That fell like a bite. Got him? Yep. Sweet. Hold on. I just... Look at this. We have doubled up. I think we're tangled together. Uh-oh. I have a feeling that you hooked a fish and I ended up getting wrapped up in you. That's a good assist. <laughs> you were like, how come my fish just got lighter? I'll tell you what, though. That's a beautiful fish, isn't it? It is. Wow. There you go. Hey, what a nice fish. We're right here under the highway below the bridge. Very first drift, wham. Nice striper. Take that every time. Well, Jim, I know you told me that fishing had gotten kind of slow, but there was nothing slow about this. It was a pretty good day. It was a good, hey, we caught a lot of different species of fish. We had a lot of fun, caught some of my favorite fish and smallmouth, and got a cooler full to go clean. I appreciate you having us down. It's always a great time to get down here. Let's go clean some fish. All righty. Hey, Thank nothing you. beats a good fish sandwich after a day on the lake like this. <laughs>Jim Springs almost here. You know what that means. It's time to start catching white bass. I'll tell you what I have people tell me all the time. They've either tried these in the past or they've heard that they're not very good to eat. And uh, if you know how to fillet them, these are excellent, aren't they? They're one of my favorites. Yeah. They're really good fish. Now there is a, you know, you, you flay these kind of how you'd flay a normal fish, but there's an extra step in there of removing some of that red meat that really is important to get that mild flavor that you get from white bass. You mind yep. giving me a demonstration today to show exactly how you do that? Don't mind at all. All right. We'll let you get started. You're going to show with a fillet, electric fillet knife, and then we may show them with a regular fillet knife if you don't mind. Don't mind at all. See if I can get this right. <laughs> Just like filleting a, any crappie, bluegill, I do everything the same. Catfish. That was literally the, just exactly how you'd fillet any other fish right there. I do try to hold my blade off of the skin just a little bit yeah, yeah. to leave the red meat that's on, you know, between the good flesh and the skin. It's making me hungry already. <laughs> these, are got, these are carrying eggs. Usually when I fillet, I will hold my knife pretty still and I pull my fish mm -hmm. and it seemed like I think it stretches the skin some and it helps helps you keep the blade off of the skin. I'll go ahead and take the rib cage off. That part right there it's a little bit of fat. Mm -hmm. I'll trim that off. That's kind of fishy. Mm -hmm. Now I'd, I like to use a regular knife instead of electric knife to do this part but we'll do it with electric. That red V, it's, mm -hmm. in a, it's in a V, it don't go very deep. Mm -hmm. Cut it at angle, that'll save you some meat. Just trim that off. That little bit, there's not much on there. Mm -hmm. So you don't waste any, any fish, actually. This part, mm -hmm. you can take the pains to get that off, but it's so thin, I don't think you'd yeah, you don't really don't have to. If you do that. want to take a fillet knife and do that, you can pull it in and pull it through. It just is a whole lot of work for what you really don't don't get much out of that. Right. So, there you go. There's a white bass. There's two great flays. This is about what you get off of a crappie or something like that if you get a good size white bass. Look how white that meat is. Absolutely beautiful. And I'll tell you what, if you've ever had white bass filleted the right way, you won't throw many more of them back, will you? No, not at all. <laughs> They're absolutely fantastic to eat. Fun to catch and even better to eat, Yep. I think. Yep. All right, you want to do a, let's do a regular knife. Actually, I like a serrated blade. Oh, okay. Works real well. Like a bread knife. Yeah. 
where the serrations come in handy is cutting through those yeah, rib oh, yeah. bones. Been a while since I've done one with a knife. Kind of take your time and just work that through there. Still get the same result. Yeah, oh yeah. It's the same exact result, fillet knife versus electric. Now, show us again from your, your next step there. The reason I cut straight down on top of the ribs there is because there's a row of small, real small bones that yeah. come right off the top of the rib cage out to this meat there. Mm. I just get rid of those. Same thing. Take that just go in cutter. at an angle. Interesting enough, we said that this is a really good way to fillet white bass, but in all honesty, striper and hybrid is exactly the same thing. You do the exact same process. They're all kind of the same fish family. Exactly. And if you uh, if you get this piece right here out, you can tell that veed red meat out of there, if you get that out, what you're left with is some of the most delicious fleshed fish that you'll find here in the state of Kentucky. So I appreciate the demonstration. So You're if, you, if you've had if you've had a bad experience, give it another try and fillet them like that. You will not be disappointed. April here in the state of Kentucky is a great time of year to be outdoors. It's when the woods come alive and the turkeys start to gobble. We just got the decoys set out. And we're in a location where any turkey that comes into this field should be able to see this decoy. We have not heard a gobble yet this morning, but we know there are turkeys here. This is about the time of day they normally start separating out again, and that gives you the best chance of calling one in. We got a turkey straight across the field, probably 150 yards. Here comes another one. We got two turkeys. These look like jakes. They're coming straight out in the field right here. Here comes another one. A third turkey just came into the field. I think we've got three jakes. We've got one on the left and we've got two on the right. They're making their way across this field. I know they're gonna come over here. another turkey. Looks to me like we've got three jakes in a hand. Here they come right here, coming right at us. I've got two jakes in range right now. Let's let this play out and see what happens. They're curious. Super, super exciting. There's a coyote all the way in the far corner. Coming out there in the field right there. Watching wildlife's always fun. But when you're on a turkey hunt and a coyote shows up, it's not necessarily a good thing. That coyote just caught something, a mouse or something. And he's eating it right now. 
not paying much attention to our decoys. I think it's because he's got a full belly. So we hunted here this morning and we saw some jakes and never heard a gobble. We had a game plan set for this afternoon hunt. It was walking in. And before I enter any field, I'll make sure I scan it as good as I can. Up there in the corner, through a tree, I see a black dot. And we start looking at it, and it goes into full strut. We got our decoy set up, backed off. We're going to try to call this turkey in. It's probably about 250 yards right now. sound off. First gobble we've heard yet. Hopefully we can get it to come to us. Problem is a hen has popped out on the other side of the field so we got a little competition from the real thing. We got to hope our decoy and our calling sounds a little better than that hen right there. This was, this was the craziest hunt. It took more patience than maybe any turkey hunt I've been on. Let's go see what we got. There he is. Oh my God. I tell you what, beautiful bird. Got a big thick beard on it. Some pretty impressive hooks on it too. Such an awesome hunt. Really, really excited to be able to get this bird because this was a solid three hours of watching this bird work. And lo and behold, he wasn't coming through this field. This bird decided it was gonna come in and sneak in and get a better look at that Jake decoy through the woods. And that's exactly what he did. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have Elise Woods with a nice gobbler that was taken on the opening day of the youth season in Mason County. Congratulations. The Shearer family has an annual tradition of catching crappie on Lake Linville. Check out this nice crappie that was caught while bank fishing. Check out this beautiful smallmouth that was caught in a small stream by David Williams. He said somehow a big fish in a little creek is more special than a big fish in a big river, and I couldn't agree more. Nicholas Morgan was out catching crappie while fishing with his grandpa at Taylorsville Lake. Nice job. Check out Jill Blema with a nice catch of crappie from Barren River Lake. Congratulations. Here we have Stevie Ligon with her first turkey that was taken on her very first hunt ever. She contributed to beginner's luck. She said she hunted a total of 15 minutes. Nice job. Check out this beautiful buck that was taken a few days before the rifle season by Woody Williams. This buck was taken with a crossbow. Congratulations. Check out this beautiful largemouth bass that was caught by Nathan Head. This was his personal best fish at over seven pounds 
and he caught it from a kayak. Nice job. If you've seen something in the past on Kentucky Field that you'd like to reference again, maybe the best place is YouTube. You can find us by searching KY a field. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. Hello, I'm Chad Miles. Did you know that when you buy a fishing license, it does more than provide summertime fun? That's nice. It produces millions of fish that are stocked in our waterways. It constructs new opportunities for boat ramps and public access. It provides new sustainable habitats for our native fish. It creates quality fishing opportunities close to home. It helps protect our home waters. And it makes for a better, more beautiful bluegrass for all that live here. The Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. It's more than just a fishing license.